Hello and welcome to the Autopilot Hardware 2 video test for firmware 17.17. Actually, 17 instead of 17.17.4. Um, due to some weird circumstances that I'll talk about here in a little bit once we get past the turns around the Wi Fi driver stack and the new 8.1 firmware updates for Tesla Model S and Model X vehicles. I know it applies to hardware 2, but not necessarily hardware 1 because I don't have any reports on those. Um, there is actually a bug in the Wi Fi driver stack that prevents it from, um, that causes it to periodically disconnect so I've been having trouble getting updates so 17 17 17 is the first update I've gotten in a while and here we go on the turns so I'm taking the turns at 30 miles an hour which is the same speed I've taken map previously right now it is hugging the inside lane much much better than it was previously um, drifted into the bike lane just a little bit and it is doing a much better job drifted into the center lane just a little bit uh, but significantly better performance overall than we were getting previously i'm going to disengage the autopilot now so i can go ahead and make this right turn So, as I was saying, there's now a, a bug that was introduced. It was actually introduced way back in 17.11.3, um, where, don't know exactly what the specific cause is, but basically what'll happen is when you connect to certain Wi-Fi networks, and when I say certain, the determining factor appears to be what other devices you have on that network. Um, when you connect to certain Wi-Fi networks, the car will go into an initialization reboot. So the Wi-Fi card, including the Bluetooth, will actually just reset themselves over and over again and it will happen continuously about 10 seconds after it connects to a wireless network every single time it connects to a wireless network. I won't go into any more detail because I actually have a separate video on that um, demonstrating the behavior and also talking about uh, workaround fixes until they can correct this in the firmware. It was definitely caused by a firmware update. So, um, on 17, 17, 17, it's doing all the things that I expect it to do. I can engage auto steer on local roads up to 45 miles an hour in this instance because the posted speed limit is 40. It is, however, still relying on, and here I made it through the intersection just fine. I'm going to disengage so I can turn right here. It is, however, still relying on GPS information for the speed limits, which is not ideal. Uh, it's not reading speed limit signs like the Autopilot 1 cars were. I'm just waiting for it to be clear. Give me a moment. All right, but I'm going to show you something that the car should not be doing right now. So this is not a highway. This is a, a roadway that was classified as a local road on the previous versions of autopilot. So it was restricted to 35 miles per hour in every um, firmware version that I had up to what presumably would have been 17174, except I skipped that one and went straight to 171717. Um, one thing you'll notice is I am currently engaged with auto steer at 55 miles an hour, which is actually 10 miles per hour over the posted speed limit. And if you look, thankfully there's a car in front of me, so I don't have to worry about it actually doing this. I can crank the auto steer all the way up to 90 miles an hour on this particular road, which is not a highway in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I'm gonna hit a stoplight here pretty soon. Um, so I don't know if Tesla has reclassified which roadways um, are, are referred to as highways under the latest firmware versions, but I've noticed this on more than one local road where I'm not actually restricted to five miles per hour over the speed limit. Um, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't know if that's still the case, like if they've done this with the Autopilot 1 cars, if they haven't, then this is a weird, perhaps, bug where the car is actually not as restricted as it is supposed to be. Um, five miles per hour of the speed limit on a local road is, honestly, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, you know, maybe I would prefer it if they would let you go 10, but realistically, one of the reasons that Autopilot is a great feature is because it kind of makes the car drive a little bit more safely than the driver might necessarily be inclined to do so. So the fact that it restricts me from doing something that I might want to do under normal circumstances, but is probably not as safe as the thing that the car is actually doing is not necessarily a bad thing. So I don't know, again, if this is a bug or if this is a reclassification of the roadways or what, but it's definitely not exactly behavior by design, at least not for local roads. It's just a question of whether or not this is considered a local road or not anymore. Um, now I'm on a different streetway and this one is divided by a divider. It's a less major street. Uh, again, there's no like clear definition within the GPS maps that would really show you like which ones are considered local roads and which ones are considered highways. Uh, and now I am restricted to five miles per hour for the speed limit and it's doing a great job at the autos. Dear, okay, I got a little scary there towards the curb. Let's try that again. <laughs> I think it would have been fine, but uh, I like to err on the side of caution. Autopilot tests are fun, but they're not worth wrecking my car over. So here we are traveling at five miles per hour over posted speed limit. Looks like it's doing just fine. 
so yeah, overall experiences with 17, 17, 17 have been very favorable. Um, it, with each new firmware version that comes out, I would describe it as the car is able to steer, whoop, not that lane. Okay, there it is trying to take the turn lane because it got confused as to which side of the road it should be, or which side of the lane it should be favoring. So it uh, ended up favoring the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side, and it tried to take the turn lane as a result. Um, but as I was saying before I got interrupted by that sudden motion, was um, with each new firmware version, the car seems to steer much more assertively than it previously did. Um, the earlier versions, the biggest problems that they would have would be that they would understeer in turns, so they would drift out of their lanes. Um, as they've been getting better, that has been happening less and less. If anything, the car actually steers... Um, not quite a hundred percent in every instance, but it's when it does screw up, it does tend to screw up in an understeer as opposed to an oversteer. Like I don't see it really like drift over the center line. It is much more assertive in terms of hugging that center line though when it's turning. It's currently in auto steer at 35 miles an hour and it's doing a great job. Let's see, it might actually take the turn lane. Nope, not this time. So in this case, we actually do want to take the turn lane because that's the direction I'm going in. I will hang my right turn, get up to a speed where I can engage again. First I like to engage the uh, adaptive cruise control, it makes it a little easier to put the autopilot on. And let's watch and see how it does. This is actually the same roadway that we started the video on, just a different section. So 30 miles per hour, local road auto steer, and it is steering like a champ. So yeah, overall, you know, baby steps that keep improving over and over again. Um, I also have a firmware tracker spreadsheet that is um, it's in the tool section over on the right-hand side of the um, Tesla official Reddit thread. It looks like you're drifting the bike lane a little there. Um, that I'm using to track deltas between Autopilot 1 and Autopilot 2 cars in terms of features. And with every new version that they come out with, they keep getting closer and closer. So baby steps, it's getting better every day. So we'll just keep tracking the updates and keep testing it every time they come out. Thanks for watching.